mountain. We are in the Siski Mountains. The Siski Mountains are what's known as an accreted drain system. So what on earth does that mean? The Oregon coastline is a collision zone. So we have that ocean floor sliding into the continent. That ocean floor is going to subduct under the continent. During that subduction process, some of that ocean floor is going to get scraped up. It's going to get smashed on to the side of the continent. That is an accreted terrain. That is how we got our Siski Mountains. So one way we can visualize this is if we have a slice of pizza. It's got a lot of cheese and a lot of toppings on it. We take our pizza and we shove it under a door. What happens to all those pizza toppings? Great, you're going to lose them all. All those pizza toppings are going to get scraped off. They're going to get stuck on to the side of the door. That is how we got our Siski Mountains. So that pizza slice is the ocean floor. All those scraped off toppings are the Siski Mountains. The door itself is the Oregon coast. So now that we are here underground, and this is a new experience for some of us, I want us all to check in with our bodies and how we're feeling right now. If anybody is experiencing any anxiety or claustrophobia, there is an opportunity to leave the cave at this time. Yeah, this is pretty awesome for you. You didn't barely need to duck. This is super cool. Bacon. 
and I do apologize that we are kind of rushing in the front here, but the other tour is entering the cave right now as we speak, so we are going to continue moving forward. I do ask that all the group stays together, and I apologize, but during this front part, we are going to be rushing a bit. Yeah, but they're not poisonous, right? That was pretty pitch black. Yeah, so this is just the street or whatever. This is the garden where we would stay on a path. There's one where you can like crawl through the rocks and stuff. I don't know. No, and I, well, I'm not a problem, but I know they opened up to new areas, but she was like, well, that's like a three hour tour. Oh, I Dumped in the river um, 
a month ago, a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that dye tracing experiment and just kind of exploring how water moves throughout the sewage system because there are a lot of cracks and crevices that we can't fit through. Uh, only the water can, so we do dump non-toxic fluorescent dye into the water, and um, we can pick it up in this collection packets, and then depending on the concentration of dye picked up in those packets, and what color the dye can you find in those packets, you can tell where the water is coming from. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Without all that stuff, I can't even drink that water. So you can drink anything once. <laughs> <laughs> right. Natural filtration through the rock. I would not recommend it at all because mm. uh, carbonic acid. Travel through the cave, there is no the waters. Yes. 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 Water like all come to us from the forest. There is also a connection through the forest. Mm -hmm. So our water can contain stuff like urea and guano. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Really cool. These are these crystals that come out of green like rocks and flow through the green rocks for a while. So, so natural filtration is good when you always walk half a mile upstream looking for dead animals in the water. Please. Is that good? Oh. Okay. So it's right now, this tunnel that we are standing in, there's a lot of wow. exposed marble. Now, marble is a metamorphic rock, and our cave is entirely composed out of this marble unit. Now that's a really cool fun fact about our cave is that we do have a marble solution cave. Marble solution caves are pretty uncommon. So how did we get this marble? Now marble is a metamorphic rock, like I mentioned. That means it used to be a different kind of rock, but after being exposed to very high pressures, high temperatures, that rock changed into this metamorphic marble. So kind of like a caterpillar can metamorphose into a butterfly, a limestone rock can metamorphose into a marble rock. Just instead of being out in a cocoon for a while, that limestone rock is going to undergo very intense pressures, very intense temperatures, in order to complete that change into marble. So why is this marble really exposed right here in this kind of jagged, very conveniently human-sized tunnel? That's because this tunnel is formed by dynamite. So this is a non-natural tunnel. That means the way that air flows through this tunnel is also non-natural. Now, airflow is a very important part of a cave system. And when we introduced this non-natural airflow, it disrupted the cave system. It was destroying a lot of the cave formations and features. So to fix that problem, we installed the door that is behind me. This door is an airlock and its job is to preserve the natural airflow in the cave. So now we are going to move through our airlock door. I ask that as we do so, you hold the door open for your neighbor behind you. There is also a small lip at the bottom of the door frame, so do watch your step as we move through. Watch your step. Yes. <laughs> Love the coolness, it's awesome. Dad, if I had my life, I'd be a 
So as that last stop, we touched a little bit on non-natural cave formation, but here I want to explore how we get caves naturally. All right. So this cave is classified as a solution cave. That means it was created by a process of dissolving out material. So this all used to be a solid slab of marble. Obviously, that's not the case anymore if we're standing inside of it. Right? Now, this cave is formed naturally by what? Water. Water. Water, yeah. That water starts up in the sky, it's going to fall down through the forest as rain. That rainwater is then going to travel down through the forest soil. As that water is traveling down through the soil, it's going to interact with that soil. It's going to pick up carbon dioxide from the soil. When our water picks up that carbon dioxide, it's going to become a solution called carbonic acid. Now, we are all very familiar with carbonic acid. Mm -hmm. Carbonic acid is the key ingredient inside of soda and other bubbly drinks that give them their bubbles. So that carbonic acid travels down to the rocks below the forest, including the marble. It fills in cracks in that marble and dissolves away at those cracks, leaving finger cracks. And then more water solution travels through, dissolving in bigger cracks and bigger cracks and bigger cracks until we get these passages and openings that we're exploring today. And that's why you don't drink soda, because that's why soda helps dissolve your bones, especially <laughs> when you're older. Yeah. Fun yeah. fact. So we can do <laughs> things in our teeth called cavities, right? If we drink a bunch of soda and don't brush our teeth afterwards, right? So those cavities are little holes dissolved in our teeth. That's the same Which process happens? that's happening Sorry. here. Yes. Sure. Are we belonging? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, is it? Uh, no. It's so spelunking is kind yeah. of the old bad term mm -hmm. that we don't really use anymore. That refers to people that are unprepared and go into caves not knowing what they're doing. Um, but we all know what we're doing. <laughs> you are on a designated path. You are being led by a guide. So today we are caving. Let's do my thing and all of them out there. Yes. And they've, yeah. and they've done a lot of damage because they Hurt, hurt the bats and anyway, it's not a good, not a good thing. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> they were cavers. We're cavers. Yeah. You want me to get the cave? We have another nice cave formation that we can check out in here. You see all these little bumps kind of on this rock right here, all those little nodules. So that is a formation called cave popcorn. <laughs> so fun fact, cave popcorn is actually named after popcorn ceiling texture, not food popcorn. But cave bacon is named after food bacon. <laughs> yes. But ceiling popcorn. So at our next stop, we will talk a little bit more about how we get cave formations and what they're made out of. Any questions before we keep going? Is it good though? There's yeah, it's good. Okay. <laughs> when you're talking critters, are you talking like micro size? 
we do have some microscopic critters. Uh, we do have some macro critters too. The echidic critters are mostly insects, and the largest one is probably about that size, what half dollar coin. But they get uh, you know small, slightly smaller than here at Comic Con. Have you seen any today? This is my first time in the cave today, so uh, no. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about those cave formations, the things that are kind of filling in the empty space of the cave. Things like the bacon, things like the popcorn, all this stuff we see in here is covering that marble, filling in the empty space. Now all of our cave formations are made out of a mineral called calcite. So that calcite comes from the water. As the water is dissolving that marble, it is going to pick up calcium from the marble. So now our water is holding calcium from the marble. It's also holding that carbon dioxide from the soil. That's a lot of stuff for a little water drop that you're carrying around with it, right? So imagine you're carrying a big box around with you. Do you think you're going to carry that box with you for the rest of your life? No. Probably not. So as our water drop comes into the cave carrying its big box and it's exposed to the air inside the cave, that big box gets very, very heavy. So if you're carrying your box and it gets very, very heavy, what are you going to do? Put it down. Yep, you're going to put it down. So our water drop does the same thing. It is going to put down that box of stuff. It's going to deposit that calcium and carbon dioxide as calcium carbonate, which makes this mineral called calcite. All of these calcite formations have been left behind by water traveling down into our cave. So you can kind of think of them as all of those little boxes stacking up drop by drop. This is what it normally is like year round or during the rainy, rainier season. It's more water coming down off the top and down the side. Yeah, so the outside weather does affect kind of the inside cave weather, <laughs> right? Uh, it takes about two days for water to travel from the surface into the cave. So if two days ago it had rained, it would be very drippy in here. Um, so when it is rainier outside or when we have snow melt, it is a lot wetter. What is this formation now? Yeah, so we have some kind of funky looking ones, kind of puffy. We have human heart, Valentine's Day one. heart, we have cat and oh. green pie, oh. we have grumpy old man, right? There's a lot of different little weird shapes. This is a special kind of calcite called moon milk. And moon milk calcite is formed by an interaction between that calcite and bacteria and microorganisms. What was the cat one? Did you see the long tail? Oh, how cute. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? All right, so the next few staircases we navigate are going to be some of the more adventurous staircases we encounter today. There are low hanging rocks from the side and from above. So I want everybody to be extra aware of their head and shoulder space moving up these stairs. I want to remind us all that we're on the cave tour today. This is not one of our astronomy programs. Don't want anybody seeing any stars on our cave. <laughs> if you do want to see stars with us here at the monument, you are more than welcome to join us for any of our dark sky events. These are free events put on throughout the summer. Our next event will be July 8th. It's a telescope viewing star party hosted by Ranger Kelly. Hey. Has there ever been any like gold found down here? or extracted out of here? No, uh, the cave does not have any sort of precious metals or minerals like that because this is a carbonate based mm -hmm. system and most of those things are found in silicate based systems. Because the cave in, if you can say marble, yeah. is the whole cave marble? And, and enclosed in all of this? Yes, so this you is don't all see it. marble. Yeah, but it's kind of covered up by this <laughs> calcite. Yeah. Except for that one area we, that was blown Yeah, because that was blasted up. Right. And the calcite hasn't had time to cover it yet. Yeah. Yes. 
Ship. Oops. Oh yeah. They go in our house all the time. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the last one. opening to the cave. That being said, this is an opportunity to leave the cave. So, if anybody would like to leave the cave for any reason at all, if you've developed any of those feelings of anxiety or claustrophobia, this is an opportunity to opt out. Alright, so let's get done. I'm going to opt in. <laughs> Do you guys want back with me? Most stay behind. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Just making a the file gets too big. Yeah. 
See that one little bat hanging out? She showed it to us back in that big room. It was, cool. it was just chilling by itself. Not even look like a big cleft or ledge. Super handy. Keep going. Now the rest of that pit is conveniently where the stairs are now. So this waterfall carved out this big pit right here. So we have a lot of water in the cave, right? We have this evidence of a lot of water being here in the past, and we've experienced a lot of water still here to this day. We've been getting a lot of cave kisses, little drips and drops falling on us here and there. Those are actually good luck, so do catch your kisses. We can hear those drops falling. We saw the river rushing earlier, right? A lot of water here in our cave. Now that's really, really important because water is one of those key ingredients we need in order to support living things inside of the cave. So not only is water important to the cave for the physical aspect, right? For all of the cave formation and development, it's also important for the biological aspect to be able to support our cave life. All right, so now we are going to go down these stairs. After the spiraling stairs, the stairs go straight. Those straight stairs are very steep, they're very narrow, and there's a low-hanging rock. So when we get to the straight stairs, I want everybody to make sure we have both hands on the railing. And when we do encounter that low-hanging rock, we are going to cave limbo. We're going to lean back under that rock. It is very, very, very important that you limbo back under the rock, because if you try to duck forward, you will fall off the stairs. I don't want to do paperwork. I'm sure none of us want to fall off the staircase today. So we're going to make sure we're holding on to both railings and leaning back. Does this waterfall still run throughout certain times of the year? It does not. So the water does not follow this path anymore. It has now shifted to follow a different path. 
or the fissure that the water was traveling through has since cemented shut the calcite. Yeah, that'd be fun walking down this with your water. No. So at the bottom of the staircase, we're going to see a very <clears throat> impressive feature called our grand column. So now, as we go down the staircase, I do want guardians to kind of sandwich any younger friends that we have with us today. Is anybody ready? And then we just have one guardian if we can stand in front of our young friends downstairs. Wait for me. There you are. Okay, you can come The cement doesn't bother it. So the, the cement base. is actually made out of the cave marble. Oh, so cool. the cave marble was kind of ground up and used for the cement story. Yeah. Before the cement, we had asphalt, and that was not good. Because <laughs> um, that petroleum from the asphalt was kind of leaching into the cave, uh, which is why we replaced it with our Right, right, yeah. Cement. That's good to know. Yeah, you're perfect cave size, huh? Oh, look at that. That is cool. grand column that I mentioned. This is one of the oldest things we have in the cave. It is 400,000 years old. Now that seems pretty old, but the cave has been developing for the past 1.4 million years. So a lot of time for the environment to develop and for life to develop with it. As we move forward, we are going to encounter that so lowest 45 do. inch tunnel. All right, so we're gonna use that cave walk that we practiced, especially coming up here in our small little wind tunnel. My hat? It's on my head. Don't need the bill, really. Let's see. Is it duck? Duck.
Yeah, that looks crazy. down from the ceiling like this are called stalactites. Keep to remember that they're called stalactites because they have to hold on tight to the ceiling. These features that grow up from the ground like this are called stalagmites. Keep to remember that they're called stalagmites because they might poke your butt. <laughs> when a stalactite and a stalagmite kiss and become one together forever, happily ever after, and meet in the middle, that is called a column. Okay. So the bottom is being formed from the dripping from the top. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so these water drops, when they kind of fall, it does drop most of the box, but not all of the box of stuff, right? So it drops off most of that calcite at the top, but there's still a little bit left. So when it drips down onto the floor, it leaves the rest of that box behind, and then that's how those black mites are able to start growing up. Does this room have a name? This is called Miller's Chapel. That's what I was going to if I can return the favor. Years for one inch of calcite growth. 
So you can see mm -hmm. teachers are already several inches long, meaning they're several thousands of years old, even though they are just little babies. Another really cool thing we see in this room is this large, dark gash of rock slicing through the middle of the room. So this is actually an igneous rock called diorite. Now, igneous rocks are formed from cooling magma. So we had some hot magma fill in this big crack in our marble here, and then cool down and solidify into this igneous rock called diorite that we see today. Yeah, so these are also some young features. These are young draperies. So draperies are those features that kind of look like melted ice cream kind of dripping over ledges. So these are just young draperies. That's cool. Ghost room. Did they just bury all the little wires to do the lighting? So the wires are kind of set on top of the rocks, and um, some rocks kind of sitting on top of them here and there. I don't think there's any drilling or anything like that, but I'm not too familiar with our electric systems. Any other questions? You can snap one for you guys real quick. Yeah. Hold it. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, really good. One, two, three. Have a cool party in here. Hey, yeah, the acoustics would be amazing in here. <laughs> All right, the next part of the tour is optional. It is entirely up to you as an individual to decide if you are going or not. It is a one way up and back these stairs. There are 44 steps. That means there's 44 steps up and 44 steps down. It is okay to be afraid of heights right now. It is not okay to be afraid of heights up there, okay? So coming back down the stairs can be a little scarier, a little more challenging than going up. Do take the re that return trip into consideration when you're making your decision. So if you do want to go up, I ask that you head all the way up to that first platform and then take turns going in small groups to the very top. On. The very top platform is currently submerged in a very large puddle. It can only fit about three or four dry people at a time. Okay. 
so I am going to stay down here. There's not going to be really any interpretation of this part. It's just up and turn around, come right back down. What you're going to be seeing is a continuation of what we have behind the stairs here. We can handle what we did yesterday. This is not happening. Want me to take him? Oh, we're, we're going yeah. up to him. Right, He's just excited. Are you going to go? Then you got to go up again. Yeah. Oh. Eva, let's wait. Is there enough room? Yeah, she said wait till people kind of come up and do Yeah, yeah, you can only have like four people up there. Yeah, Eva, On that up there. Yeah. Eva, come down here, please. Down here. Kurt, what do they call this? Thank you. Oh. He's just trying not to get shoes. I'll go up after the cleaners. More curtains. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Were you coming up there? You still can't come up there. Oh, yeah, that's real water. Oh, dude. Yeah, I got a photo. Come on, go get us, Eva. Get us, in. Eva. All right, long man. way. When That's they come place. down, come up here, and then I'll come back down with you. Come on. Photo, please. Places. Pretty gnarly. Cool. Picture of all my time. <laughs> What's this like ripply stuff on the side of the wood? Is that the ripply 
jaggedy stuff. That's kind of reddish. Yeah, so that kind of reddish jagged stuff is uh, clay stuff. So the clay pocket that we have here is the Or the draperies, I know someone says. Alright, everyone, you do need to head down. Now, please. There's still people up there. Thank you. 